Yeah.
If anybody has a reason to sing, we do, oh we do. If anybody has a reason to sing, we do, yes we do sing. Come on and praise the Lord, let's praise the Lord, let's praise the Lord, let's praise the Lord. If anybody, if anybody has a reason to sing, we do, yes we do sing, we do. If anybody has a reason to sing, say we do, yes we do sing. Come on, let's praise the Lord, let's praise the Lord, let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. If anybody, if anybody, reason to pray, yeah. I know we do. Yes, we do sing. If anybody, if anybody has reason to pray, yeah. we do. Yes, we do sing. Come on and praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. And if anybody, if anybody, that's just a way. Send a message to bring. We do. Yes, we do. Sing we do. If anybody has a message to bring, I know that we do. Yes, we do. Sing we do. Come on, praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Come on. Sweet. 
do the same. Come on and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. The Lord. And if anybody has a reason to sing, oh, we, yes, we do sing. We be a confusing journey and it doesn't always make sense. Family issues, substance abuse, fading health, and financial problems are just a few of the roadblocks you may encounter. Need answers? 
at Woodlawn Park Church of Christ, we want you to know that God loves you and has the answers you seek. No one here expects you or your life to be perfect. At Woodlawn Park, we're just like you. Real people with real problems who are seeking real solutions in Christ. We've been through some of the same struggles and understand that the pathway to your full potential is paved with love, support, and the encouragement of a dynamic community of believers. We know that within Challenges Lab, the opportunity to move mountains in our lives and in our community. We believe that God has a purpose for you, and our goal is to help you achieve it. At Woodlawn Park, we're creating a new brand of believers, one that beats the odds when there isn't a chance, one that succeeds when the world says we can't, one that truly cares about the abandoned and lost, one that has faith in God's power no matter the cost. If you're wondering what your purpose is in life, if you're looking for the next step, join us. Let us meet you where you are, teach, encourage, and motivate you to allow God to enhance your life so that you can transform the world. Good morning and happy Lord's Day to the members of the body of Christ and to all of those who are searching for God in their lives. My name is Elmer Assembly III. I'm the minister here at the Woodlawn Park Church of Christ. We welcome you and thank you for coming and connecting with us this morning for a period of worship to our great God in heaven. We are going to begin and open up this service with a song from our illustrious uh, minister of music, uh, Brother Lamar Robinson, Jr. But we want you to be prepared. Hopefully you have your pens, pencils, Bibles, and everything ready to indulge in a study and a worship of our great God. Thank you so much. We're going to open up right now with a song. Thank you. Amen. Let's all stand at this time as we go before the presence of God, singing Magnify the Lord, because that's why we came this morning. We came uh, to magnify the Lord, the Spirit, and the truth, which simply means to serve him, to give him everything that he deserves. We have come into this house to magnify the Lord and worship him and worship him and we have come into this house to magnify the Lord and worship him and worship him said we have come into this house to magnify the Lord and worship him and Lord oh, worship him church. Good morning. Good morning to those of you who are out there in cyberspace. I'll be bringing to you this morning the opening prayer. I'm going to start reading from Proverbs chapter 7. <clears throat> Bible says, my son, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. 
Keep my commands and live and my law as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Our God and our Father, we just thank you so much for an opportunity to worship you in spirit and the truth this morning. We thank you for each and every day that you, you breathe breath into our lungs, Father God, that we can have another opportunity to make you proud, to obey your word, to grow as people, to grow as uh, members of the body of Christ. We pray that as we open up this worship service that things are done and words are said and songs are sung that glorify you, worship you, uh, and we just thank you so much for all that you've done for us, Father God. We pray for the preacher that's coming forward this morning. Help him preach your word boldly. Help him preach a word that is uh, just easy for us to understand and apply to our daily lives. We pray that we can uh, just become better members of society, uh, better men and women uh, within our families. And we just thank you so much, Father God. These things and all things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's all be seated at this time. It's good to see each and every one of you who are streaming with us at this time. And those that are sitting in the sanctuary at this moment, we're not going to uh, allow ourselves to completely humble ourselves before the presence of God for the offering, but now for the communion of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Number 321 at the cross. We'll sing the first and we'll sing the second verse of this song this time. At last, indeed, uh, I say, uh, bleed, uh, and in my sovereign time, oh, indeed, oh, and I say, and for such a world as I. everyone we are now at the point of our service which is communion an opportunity to reflect on the sacrifice that was made by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I'll be reading from first Peter chapter number two starting at verse number 21 for even hereunto were you called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was gall found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, revolved not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed for ye were as sheep going astray but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Let's go to God in prayer. Most righteous God, our Father, it is truly grace, mercy to have this opportunity to partake 
in your broken body and shed blood. We pray at this time that we will partake in a manner that is pleasing and acceptable in your sight. It is through your sons, Jesus, we pray. Let us say amen. amen. Please partake in the communion. We are now transitioning to the giving point of our service. And giving is an important act of worship that we are commanded to partake. And God has blessed us with a number of opportunities to participate in this offering. I would like to read the scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, starting at verse number 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. The ways that we have to participate in this offering are such. Through the PushPay app, also online at Woodlawn park.org you can also text a mobile text at Woodlawn give 77977 you can download the apps at uh, Apple App Store or Google Play Store type in woodlawnpark.org you can give by Mail the address Woodlawn Park, P.O. Box 47248, Baltimore, Maryland 21244. And as always, for those who are present here, there is a box in the back in which you can place your offering. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, despite all, you have been there and will continue to be there for us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will allow our minds to remember this and that you will always help us to be able to see the blessings that come from our relationship with you. We pray at this time that you will allow us to give back just a portion of what you so richly bless us with. Help us, help us to understand that your pockets are so much deeper than ours mm. and that if we are able to just show our love and appreciation that you will in turn show your marvelous love and appreciation for us. Yes. Continue to be with us now and forevermore through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. At this time, we're not going to notice this so sweet to trust in Jesus. Now, we're going to sing the first, uh, second, and fourth stanza of the song, and after this song, we'll have our scripture reading uh, and our prayer. Uh, Tis so sweet to trust uh, in King Jesus. Let the church say amen. 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 Let's say. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, or just to Just in sin, 
won't claim to pardon me Need the healing cleansing blood We call him Jesus, Jesus How I trust him, how I and those who are streaming live with us for this morning's worship to our God who art in heaven through his dear son Jesus. Right now we're going to do the scriptural reading which I'm going to read and it's taken from 1 Peter 5 10 to 11. That's 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10 to 11. And it reads as follows. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while, perfect, established, strengthened, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bow in a word of prayer to our God who art in heaven. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done and doing for us. Thank you for sending your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life a ransom on that cruel cross of Calvary so that we might have a right to the tree of life, spiritual blessings, and an abundance of life here on earth. Please enable us to absorb the word which is going to be preached unto us by Brother Assembly. Yes, please. Bless him and enable him to speak your word clearly and concisely, boldly, without addition or subtraction, so that it will prick our hearts and allow us to be the Christians you would have us to be and teach us how to be Fishers of men, dear God, be with us always as we go into the further point of this service. We ask this prayer and blessing in the name of your dear son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Beautiful prayer, my brother. Let us all stand at the sound. Let us stand at the sound. It's good to see all these beautiful faces that have assembled here on this morning. Really good to see my beautiful parents. God bless y'all. It's good. That's right. The of the Lord. That's right. Uh, That's let's right. do a quick second to just let's wave. Let's give a spirit to wave if we can, everybody. Let's do that. Amen. Is it all right? Yeah, it's good to encourage everybody. We're going to say uh, we're marching to Zion. And I'm going to pitch the song a little lower in key because uh, the higher we sing in the range, the higher the song going to get. Is that all right, church? Is that all right? Amen. Amen. So, so we're going to pitch this in the lower key. Uh, we're going to sing the first, uh, the second, and the fourth stanza. Uh, of the song, we're marching to Zion. Come, we that love the Lord and let our joy be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And the Oh, see. 
let the church say amen this morning. It's a wonderful opportunity that we have here this morning to be able to connect with one another and to be able to set aside some time to worship our great God in heaven. If you are visiting our service, either physically this morning or by way of our virtual uh, broadcast, we want you to know that you are our honored guest. Thank you for coming and taking this time uh, to set aside time to worship God. We are fastly uh, uh, coming to the end of 2000 um, or 2020. 2020. And I know and I'm betting that most of you are ready to celebrate the ending of 2020. That's right. It's been a very difficult and a deadly year uh, for many of us and many families and many people. It has been uh, very trying, challenging, and uh, we are, are definitely Um, uh, ready, hopefully, to move to the year 2021. Now, our, uh, we do, I wanted to take this time, since many of you on our broadcast, especially, uh, do not stay and hang around for the announcements and the benediction. We want to, I want to make sure that everyone knows about our end of year Uh, celebration, our end of year uh, program and fellowship and celebration that we're going to have on December the 31st, uh, 2020 at 7 p.m. And it's going to be our very first virtual end of year celebration, December the 31st, 7 p.m. And it's going to be on Zoom now on Zoom. Uh, and uh, so, you know, that might pose some challenges for some, but we're going to work with you and the congregation through it for those of you who have yet to be able to connect to these different uh, mechanisms and these different medias. We're going to have uh, opportunity for you to um, get trained on that or someone to help you with that. But it's going to be on Zoom and every member of the Woodlawn Park Church of Christ will get the link that they will be able to just click on to get the Zoom, uh, to get to the end of your fellowship on Zoom. So you all, all, if you're a member of the Church of Christ, the Woodlawn Park Church of Christ, all you, you're going to get the link. And you're going to get it several times because some people say, I didn't get it. Well, we're going to get the link several times. If we have your email address, if we have your phone number, you will get the link. You will get it several times. If you are not a member of the Whitlam Park Church of Christ, we don't have your information. You can connect to Facebook on December 31st. Collect, connect to Facebook, the Whitlam Park page, Whitlam Park page on Facebook, and the link will be there for you to click and you can, um, you can access the end of year uh, program. It's going to be, I, I think, a great um, program. I, and I, I'm going to tell you that I have a lot of things in mind to do. Uh, we, as part of the program, as part of our program, though, we are going to uh, ask the members, and we're asking the members now, I'm asking you now, to uh, kind of like create your own 30-second uh, video. Your own 30, your own 30 second video about uh, and the theme can be something. It, it can be anything you can. You can sing. You can you can um, you can do some memory work. But the theme is. After the parables of Christ, it's Woodlawn Park is like Woodlawn Park is like. And we want you to, like, be creative and, you know, think about this year. Think about what is happening. Think about Woodlawn Park Church of Christ. And we want you to create something uh, that Woodlawn Park is like. We want you to record it, the 30-second video, uh, something like that. It doesn't even have to be 30 seconds. I, I want to kind of like give you an idea of, of what I 
decided to do. I, I'm going to give you an idea of what I decided to do. And, and many of you are going to be a bit surprised. And, and I took it from the worship theme of, of how we had to really, uh, really engage and really do some creative things for our worship so our people could still worship upon the first day of the week. And we have gotten it down now to almost a science where we are connecting and, and things like that. We're doing the best that we can with what we got. You're connecting with us this morning. So look at this video, 30 seconds of here of worshiping. <laughs> Worship is like and worship at Whitlaw Park is like skating on the clouds of heaven. Look at that. Isn't that bad? <laughs> That's beautiful, isn't it? Okay, okay. Whitlaw Park, we just want to do some fun things. We want to do some fun things. Now, they took the music out of it. I had, you, see, you see the music? Let's do it again. Oh, but anyway, uh, we definitely want to do some fun things like that at the end of year fellowship. We want you to, we want our groups like our um, Sunday school, our um, ladies fellowship. Maybe you can do a group thing. Maybe you can do an individual, maybe do a family thing. But a uh, short video, and maybe if you want to sing, and it takes more. I know Sister Lewis is out there. Sister Lewis, and if you want to sing, if you want to sing, go on here and sing, and you could take a little longer than 30 seconds if you like. Now, everybody will get that. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I love you, Sister Lewis. But anyway, we want you to be mindful of the 31st end of your fellowship, and we'll move from there. I appreciate that you allow me to take the time to, to announce that. We are going to continue this morning our series, our current series of God Comes First series. And the question that I asked at the outset, what is it about God comes first that you do not understand? What is it? This series is designed to help put God in the first position in our lives. Make God the priority of our lives. And what we're going to get from our text and lesson today is just that. In 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, verses number 6 and through 11, where we're going to take our text, we're going to see Peter trying to convey this message along with a principle to the Christians who were there. My friends, no matter what period of biblical history that you may study, God has always required that his people put him first in their lives. In the Old Testament, he engaged the nation of Israel as soon as they came out of bondage in Exodus, the 20th chapter and verse number three. He told them that you shall have no other gods before me. And he meant that. In the New Testament, Jesus comes back in Matthew, the 22nd chapter and verse number 37. He tells us that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul and with all our mind. And then again, Jesus in Matthew, the sixth chapter and verse number 24, he tells us unequivocally, I got that out. <laughs> he tells us that you cannot, we cannot serve two masters. He says, if you try, you will either hate one and love the other or else you will be loyal to one and despise the other. 
You cannot serve. And in this instance, he's talking about God and money and mammon. And again, Jesus in Matthew chapter six and verse number 33, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says, and all these things shall be added unto you. But at times, my friends, at times, uh, Jesus, God, he sees us. He sees us straining and he sees us trying to live a godly and a God first and a God centered life. But we are under great stress to do so. We are under stress to try to maintain a God first uh, posture and center. We are trying to our best and we are straining and struggling. We're going to look at this in Mark, the sixth chapter and verse number 48 on Wednesday. But on Wednesday night, that's one of the things that we're going to look at this straining process because it affects us everywhere we go in our homes, in our families, with our jobs all around us. Sometimes it is a strain to put God first. This strain and stress in trying to live the Christian life and put God first is the thrust of Peter's message in 1 Peter. He spends a lot of time in 1 Peter dealing with this element. Before we get to our text in 1 Peter 5, I want to go to 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, and around verse number 12. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, to set it up so that you can get the flavor of how um, Peter is interacting and trying to bring the Christians along. And we'll look at more of that also on Wednesday. But he says in verse number 12, beloved. He says, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. What has tried you in 2020? What has been your tries or trials? And many of us can say we've had a full of trials. In 2020, he says, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. As though some strange thing is happening to you. He says, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. Oh, yeah. Oh, one of the things that we, we fail to really focus on a lot of times is that for most of his 33 years here on earth, he was on trial. He was treated wrongly. And when you and, and so he says to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, he said, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. He says, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, what? Blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. He says, on their part, on, the, on, on those who are doing it, he is blasphemed. But on your part, he says, he is glorified. In verse 15, he says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busybody in other people's matters. A lot of those. 
Yet if anyone suffers as a what? Christian. Let him not be ashamed, but rather glorify God in this matter. He, he said, I know that there's some trouble and you're going to suffer. But he said, I need you to understand to glorify God through your suffering. He says, for the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first. What will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Well, that's just part of how Peter is trying to get the Christians to, to shift the lens, to shift the mindset from the present day at that time trials and sufferings and persecutions to remember to put God first. Seek God first. Glorify God. Praise God. Amen. Great is our God. And I'm going to, that's the one I was looking for, Brother Robinson. Great is our God. And that comes out of Psalms, I believe. And you, you get that for me when you get a chance. Great is our God. And we're going to come back to that. He is great. He is awesome. So in our text now, in 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, and verse number six, he tells them, he tells other people, he's tell, he tells them to, first of all, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may, what? Exalt you in due Time says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. He says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It tells us in verse number nine, resist him, steadfast in the faith. Knowing that what? The same sufferings are experienced by your brothers, your brotherhood, brothers and sisters in the world. But may the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. It says, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. My topic for this morning, God Comes First Series, part number two, stress test, stress test. A little while ago, my doctor found some slight abnormalities and irregularities in my heart. They immediately scheduled what they call a stress test. You see, the definition of stress test in general is a method of deliberate Intense and thorough testing used to determine and identify the stability of a given system or entity. 
Stress tests are there in order to expose, expose the flaws that may be operational in the system. And in this case, it's in the heart. In my case. Its whole purpose is to explore and identify this. Stress tests are not intended to be pleasant, but rigorous. Now, how does this apply? I want you to understand that God allows us to go through stress tests in order to determine to expose the condition of our spiritual heart. He allows us sometimes to go through these stress tests. You have, my friends, when you talk about stress tests, it's very important. Stress tests are very important. A lot of things, even in our infrastructure as uh, as uh, roads, bridges, they need to go through before you allow cars to pass on them regularly. They need to go through an engineering stress test. They, 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 they have to be able to withstand sometimes a more or over exertion. Or more weight in our transportation uh, sector. Planes go through stress tests. That's right. You know what? I, I, I must admit that some, I'm not an engineer. But some of you, when you go traveling, you just take too much luggage. Yeah. And I'll be worried sometime. I'm on the plane. I'm saying, why does she or he, some, now it's he too, why do they have to have that much luggage? Because I'm thinking, because I don't know what the, the limits are. But I do know this. I was on a plane. And we were ready to take off. And the pilot Started down the runway. And, and if anybody, you know, you know how that is. Yeah. The jets rev up. And that's when all of us all of a sudden start praying. Yeah. But anyway, God, please just help us to get in the air. And he's going down the runway. And of course, you're picking up speed. And do you know that they have a certain point that is very critical. That they either have to make a decision to let this plane continue up in the sky or stop. And at this particular point, the only time this ever happened, all the times that I rode and have flown, I heard all of a sudden he was going down. And I knew it was about ready to take off. I know I was just looking out of the window. I could see, here we go. We get ready to get off the look because the wings start doing like this, you know. And then I heard him reverse the engines and start pulling it back and then putting on the, 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 the brakes, the air brakes. And he gets on the thing very calm. He says, um, oh, it's no problem. He says, I, I think we have too much weight. And he taxied around. Help me. Now, I really appreciate that, Paul. <laughs> but he was able to identify that it was too much. Stress tests help you to identify and know when and where it's too much. 
Sometimes in our spiritual life, we are taken off. We think we're taken off. And we got too much, too much weight. The Bible, and I'm just thinking about this one as we talk. The Bible in Hebrews, what's that? Come on, the Bible in Hebrews. Well, I'll get that. I'll get that later. Go on, get that from me, brother, uh, uh, brother Robinson. Hebrews. He said we must take off the weight. What's that? You better say it out loud. <laughs> okay, but stress tests. Stress tests. We have stress tests in our regular lives. That's Hebrews 12, right? Hebrews 12. What is Hebrews 12 in verse number one? Verse number two. Hebrews 12 and verse number two. Get that for me, media. Hebrews 12 and, and verse number two. What does the Bible say? Read. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. To author and finish of our faith. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Yes, we enjoyed the cross. Right, read. Come on, read. Consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against him. Yeah. That she bewildered and fainted your mind. All right, all right, all right. That's good. That's good. That wasn't what I'm looking for. But that's all right. That's okay. We get it. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. One. Number one? All right, but that's all right. What does it say? It's a wherefore seen we also are compassed. Yeah, that's it. Seeing that we are compassed about with so what? Greater cloud of witnesses. He says, let us take off every weight and the sin which so easily ensnare us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. That's right. See, that's what you got. That's when you hear, you can do that. And I'm not saying anything now. Y'all good. You good. You still here. I heard you. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. So, even in our lives, we deal with stress tests and even in the ministry. You see, premarital counseling and marital counseling is designed to be a stress test. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Y- y'all know y'all come in. And, and, you know, before you come into the counseling room, you know, I- I'm in a different mode. I- I'm, I'm, I'm with. I, yeah, y'all want to get married? They all, yeah, I'm going to get married. Do you, they smile and all that stuff. I say, okay, now, you want, you sure that you want counseling? And I tell the couples, you sure? Because I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And so I am going to tell and bring up Everything that I possibly can to get you to think about what you're doing. It's good you want to get married. But God says that marriage should last your lifetime. And so what happens is in the premarital counseling, I need, we need to be able to bring up situations that you're not thinking about right now because you are all lovey-dovey. I had a brother to tell me today. I'm not going to tell you who. I, I wouldn't dare. But he told me, he says, the only thing stopping me from being good right now is being married. Is not being married is not being married. There are people who want to get married. And that's a good thing. But you need to go through the stress test. You need, you and your partner, your husband or your wife, need to go through stress tests. So stress tests are not designed to be pleasant but rigorous. Our nation right now, my friends, are going through or is going through a stress test. People of ill repute led by Donald Trump, a master manipulator, 
horrendous liar and insubordinate to the rule of law are trying are trying to destroy and undermine our democracy. It is going through a stress test, the democracy. My friends, even, and I'm, this, is, this is just a side note, <laughs> but I got to tell you, we got to share it because it's a good example. Even members of his own family have called him the most dangerous man on earth. My friends, but this is nothing new. Men have been this way all the time. As a matter of fact, if you turn to Titus, the first chapter, verse number 10 through 16, men try to do this to the Lord's church. To the Lord's church. He says in verse number 10 of Titus, the first chapter says, For there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers. He says, especially those, and he names it, he says, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths, he says, must be stopped, who subvert whole households. He says, teaching things that they ought not for the sake of what? Dishonest gain. He says, one of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. Now, can you say, y'all thought I was wrong. See, I told y'all, just hold on. It was nothing I was saying that, that even come close to this. He said, this testimony is true. He said, therefore, he said, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Not giving heed to Jewish what? Fables, conspiracy theories, all of these ideas. He says, and commandments of men who turn from the truth. In verse 16, he says to them, and this is a sermon, uh, verse 15. This, this is a sermon all of in itself. To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled, when you are defiled and when you become defiled, he says, and unbelieving, nothing is pure. There is nothing anybody can say to some people that you can change them around. And we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. It says, but even their mind and conscience are defiled. In verse 16, he says, they profess to know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, being disqualified for every." Good work. Oh, my friends. Oh, my friends. We individually and collectively, as the body of Christ, must endure our stress tests. We must keep God first. This is God's. This is one of the reasons why Romans 8.28 is so important. Romans 8.28 tells us, and we know, that everything worked together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. He, he, says, he says, listen. There, are, there is going to be trouble. There are going to be some instances in health. There's going to be everything. But if you are God first, God center, godly, he says it's going to eventually, this is God's word, it, it eventually going to work out for good. So our proposition, God Proposition for this morning, God, the great physician. 
gives directions and elements of your stress tests to keep him first in your lives. That's what he's doing in first Peter, the fifth chapter. He's given them elements and directions to keep God first in their lives. A major premise, major premise. God allows his children to go through spiritual stress tests to determine the real condition of their heart and of their faith. Now, he does this in a number of ways. Sometimes, as you turn to, to Luke, the 12th chapter, verse number 16 through 21, Luke, the 12th chapter, I'm going to ask brother, uh, brother, brother Bland to read Luke, the 12th chapter, verse number 16 to 21. Sometimes what happens is God allows you to receive tremendous blessing, tremendous material blessing. He says in verse number 16, what does it say? Read. Then he spoke a parable to then them. Then he spoke a parable and saying what? Saying the ground of a certain rich man. Yes, read. Yielded plentifully. Come on, read. And he thought within himself. Read. Saying, what shall I do since I have no room to store up my crops? Read. So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns. Now listen, he, he allowed him to have so much resource. He said, I'm going to pull down my barns. And, and build I what? greater. Build greater. Read. And there I will he store says, then all I'm my crops store and my, my goods. Crops. Crops and my goods, read. And I will say to my soul. And then I'm going to say to my soul. So, so you have many goods. You have laid many up goods for, many years. for years. What? Take, take, take your thy ease. ease. Eat, eat, drink, drink and be, and be merry. And be merry. And but what did God, God said to him, say? Fool. God said, "Fool, this night your soul the will be required of you." The stress test that you got, you were blessed, and then you ignored God. You are ignoring God with your blessings. How about you? How about me in this whole pandemic thing? God is still on the throne. He still requires of us to do as we need to as his children. You're living. Can't you see is even more of a blessing. Sometimes, my friend, I got to move on. Sometimes uh, he allows you to go through temptation. He allows you to go through temptation. The Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 13. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse number 13. He allows you to go through temptation to see if you will seek a way of escape. He allows you to do that. He said, okay. I'm going to put a way of escape. What he says, no temptation is what? Overtaking He you. said, no, this is a stress test. This is a stress test. No temptation has overtaken you. Except he said, such except as is, is common, common to, man. to the man. He but said, God it's is still, faithful. he said, the machine is still on moderate. Yeah. He said something. He said something, preacher. Y'all know what about stress tests? I got on that stress, one of the treadmill, and they, 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 they just said, they said, keep on going. 20 minutes later, keep on going. It's still on moderate. He said, but God is faithful, and he said that he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what? You are able. What you are able. He said, but if, in fact, it does, he said, but with the temptation, will also make, will a, way also of make a way for you to escape it. You may now, how many bearer. of us have been in that situation? And of all my days in the ministry, I've had one person admit one time, they told me, they came up and they said, Brother Assembly, I was uh, about ready to do something. And then the God and the scripture came that he's going to give me a way for escape. And then I said, well, that's great. And I said, that's good. He said, no, you don't understand. I didn't take it. <laughs> I said, that's, that's good that you, at least you know you didn't take it. <laughs> God will provide a way of escape. That's your stress test. Sometimes your stress test is family. 
Sometimes your stress test is family and, 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 and blended families. Blended families. And God wants, he, he wants us, he, he, look, God, God allows us opportunity to be happy. But that doesn't mean you're not going to go through the stress test. You got to go through the stress test. And some of us put everything on family. Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse number 34 through 39. Jesus himself talking to uh, 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 the, the, the people. Jesus himself. He said, do not think I come to bring peace on earth. I did not come bring, to bring peace, but a sword. Because he know his word. His word cuts us. The word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. He knows it's going to stress test us. In verse 35, he says what? For I have come to what? Set a man against Set his father. Set a man against his father. A daughter against a mother. A daughter against her mother. A daughter-in-law against her mother. A daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemy and will a man's be those enemies, of his own household. Jesus said a lot of times are in his own household. And he says, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take of his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Didn't he say, put no other gods before me? I got to go. I got to move on. And the next, the next, sometimes he wants to see uh, if we are going to repent. Sometimes he wants to see if we're going to repent, to see if you'll repent on your own without getting a donkey with it. <laughs> no, we're real people, real problems. We're real people. That's not a, that's a, a butt whipping. Because you know what well, you say it at home. <laughs> That's right. You know you say it at home. You know you you have grown up and said you know you've heard your mother. I am going to you know. <laughs> and some of us have gotten them. But why do we? But sometimes we do the same thing with God. We have to get that from God. We're going to look at that even more on Wednesday night. And you can read Joshua, the seventh chapter, in preparation. <laughs> you can read Joshua, the seventh chapter, in preparation. He said, but you shouldn't have to get a whipping all the time. I have three children. I have four children. Two of them. One of them. One of them got to get a whipping all the time. He had to get a whipping all the time. It was no, no, just, just don't even try to, uh, don't, don't, don't even try negotiation. <laughs> and that's where we are as children. You don't have to get a whipping all the time. Sometimes God wants to see who are you going to listen to. Who are you going to listen to? You see, in uh, Acts, the fourth chapter, in Acts, the fourth chapter, and verse number 19, Acts, the fourth chapter, and verse number 19, what does he say? But Peter and John answered them and said, whether it is right mm -hmm. in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God. You judge. You judge. Sometimes we have to tell people that. Is it right to listen to you more than God? You see, putting God, when I say God, what don't you understand about God comes first? What don't you understand? What, you, what don't you understand? God comes first. Not boyfriend, not girlfriend, not husband, not wife, not boss. 
not president. Yes, sir. God comes first. Right. So we got four points. Four points quick. I got, I got to do them in two seconds. Four points from our text in 1 Peter. 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. In verse number six, verse number five, he talks about humbling yourself. Humble yourself, 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, and verse number six. What does he say? Therefore, yes. humble yourselves under humble the mighty hand of God. Under the mighty hand of God, that he may time. exalt you in due time. Cast I want it. you to think about this. First of all, God says you have to allow yourself to be humble. Allow yourself to be humble. Allow yourself to be humble. He says in verse number five, just above that, God resists the proud. He resists the proud. Allow yourself to be humble means uh, that you have to allow your God first place in your life. The Bible in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 7. Philippians chapter 3, verse number 7 through 10. That's Philippians 7, chapter 3, verse 7 through 10. He, Paul says, but what things were gained to me, these things I have counted loss for Christ. In verse 8, yet I indeed count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ in my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them rubbish that I may gain Christ and being found in him. Not having my own righteousness. But the righteousness which comes from God. Number two, I want to see. To show in verse number eight and nine of our text in first Peter, the fifth chapter. In verse eight and nine, he says what? Be sober. Yes. Be vigilant. Yes. Because your adversary, the devil. Yes. Read. Walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yes. Resist him. Steadfast in the faith. Resist him. Stop fearing him. It doesn't say fear him. says resist him oppose evil oppose evil resist him the same sufferings are experienced by your brother in the world number three in verse number 10 he says what but may the god of all grace yes who called us yes to his eternal glory by christ jesus yes three after you have suffered a while after you have suffered a while perfect god will perfect you establish he will establish you strengthen strengthen and settle you and settle you that goes along right along with uh, the bible in romans the fifth chapter and verse number three romans the fifth chapter verse number three and four he talks about this in romans the fifth chapter verse three and four he says not only that but we also glory in our tribulations this is the same concept glory in your trials Glory, because God is with you. Glory in your tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces something in you. It produces perseverance. And verse number four, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And lastly, in verse number four, the point I want to give to you goes right along to what God told Israel and what Christ told us. To love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. And he says in verse number 11, this is called a doxology. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 11. This is a doxology. This is an outburst, an outburst of praise. How many of you have experienced this when you needed God the most in your life and you know 
that you need him. You have done everything you can. You have, may have been resistant or you may not have, but you are in this situation and you know there is no place else to go. I am done, God. It is an outburst of praise. And then in, the, in, the, in that song, that's what I love about it. Great is our God. What does it say? Great is our God. He said, and worthy to be praised. God is great. And he always comes. You may have been on the hospital bed. You may have been there and you may have cannot breathe or cannot move or struggling. And all you can turn to is God. You may be in the divorce court. And you thought your life was over. You may have been on the battlefield somewhere in Afghanistan, Iraq, or wherever. There are people who are there at that point right now. And if it's you, great is our God. He outbursts, he's great is our God. To him be the glory and dominion forever because I'm going to put him first in my life. Amen. You can say what you want to say, but I'm putting him first. You can do what you want to do, but I'm putting him first. My friends, some of us need to put God first on Wednesday night. We're going to look at denominations. Churches that were established after Christ. After Christ established his church in the Bible in Matthew 16, 18. We need to learn to put the stress tests on anything that's not in the Bible. Because God has given us in his word a mode and a method for salvation. What is the stress test that's going on in your life right now? Can you give up and allow God to handle it? If you need salvation and never been a part of the Lord's church, never had your sins remitted, never were in a relationship, a positive relationship with Christ in the Bible, they initially took five points, five steps. They heard, first of all, about God. Because the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's Romans 10, 17. They believed it. They believed God's word. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible for him, for us to please God. For whoever comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. They repented, meaning turned from their own way, their own righteousness, to God's way. They confessed Jesus as Lord. They said that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And they were baptized for the remission of their sins. They were baptized in water, and this was a submersion, baptism. And the Bible says... When they were raised out of the water, they were to walk in the newness of life. Is that what you want this morning? Take the stress test in our own lives. Allow God to help you through it. He's not going to put anything more than you can bear. He loves you. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to serve, an opportunity, Father, to worship. Thank you for your word. I'm asking you, Father, to help every individual here and within the sound 
of my voice to be able, Father, to evaluate, to take the stress tests of their relationship, of their love, their commitment, of their sacrifice, of their obedience to you. And Father, we do love you. It is in Jesus the Christ's name that we ask this prayer. Amen. Let us stand for a singing of a hymn. Stand for the singing of a hymn. Thank you. And wash away my sin is nothing but the blood of Jesus. And the what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus will sing, oh, precious dear, I know that makes me a white as no other bounds I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus, and for my part in this I see nothing but the blood of Jesus, and for my cleansing this might be nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus was singing, oh, precious, a sister flow that, that makes me a white as snow. I'm just asking the congregation to continue to keep my family, the Robinson family, in prayers. Um, also keep me in prayers as well as I continue to make some strides spiritually uh, to a variety of different endeavors that I'm, I'm praying on. And also, uh, I come before the congregation just to keep uh, the world collectively in prayers. We know uh, at the end of this month, there will be millions of people uh, will possibly miss out on and losing out on uh, supplementary benefits. And that's going to be... Um, devastating to a lot of families. So we just want to keep uh, this world, this city, uh, this state in prayer at this time. God bless you. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Before I, do, before I go, um, before I do the announcements, let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, Thank you, Father God, for blessing us with another opportunity to hear the word of God. Father, we ask that you be with Brother Lamar. Please, Father God, uh, um, honor his prayer request. Please, Father God, um, bless him as only you can, Father God. And bless those, bless everyone else, Father God, who's watching here live and uh, online, Father God. If anyone has any issues that they're going through, Father God, please place your hand of healing and compassion upon their shoulders, Father God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. Brother Sanders, I'll be doing the announcements for today. Before we get started, let's please give Brother Simley uh, a, a warm round of applause for his lesson today. <laughs> Praise God. Real people, real problems, huh? Trying to get your preaching license taken away, man. <laughs> Praise God. I'd like to say welcome to our visitors. If we have any today, please know that you're our honored guest. If you would like to please stand and tell us where you're from and your names. Anybody? Praise God. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, the virtual end of year program that Brother Assembly spoke of earlier, December 31st, starting at 7 p.m. Members, the Zoom link will be sent to your email. The link will also be available on our website and Facebook page. Sunday, the virtual Bible study for youth of all ages from 9.30 to 10 a.m. Members, check your email for the link. New non-members, please register at info at woodlawnpark.org. 
Monday through Saturday, we have a ladies' prayer call at 10 a.m. That number is 605-475-4800. And the dial-in code is 822-601. Tuesday, we have a women's Bible study. That's every Tuesday, by the way. They are on Lesson 10, Sephira. Tuesday, we have a men's Tuesday night Bible study. That is from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, in person. I believe it is also, uh, I'm not sure, Brother Glenn, is that in person, right? Okay, yes, in person. And online, too? Okay, and it is online. Wednesday, we have a Bible study, an in-person Bible study, which is uh, in person and live stream here at the building uh, on Facebook and YouTube, and that starts at 730 if you would like to pick up your community supplies and drop off your offering, you can do so here at the building between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. These are all the announcements that I have at this time. Please remember to keep the, the sick and the shut-in in prayers. Please also pray for the bereaved and the family of the bereaved. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Sing the song. There are some things, are some things I may not know, may not know, there are some places I can go, say I cannot go, but I am sure, I am sure of this one thing. Don't you know God is real? God is real. He's real in my soul. Real in my soul. If my God is real, oh, for He has won and made me old. His love for me, love for me, His life. Oh, if my God is real, oh, I can feel Feel Him in my soul I cannot tell, cannot tell Just how you feel When Jesus washed your sins away closing prayer I just want to make sure that everyone has the email address in order to send the short video recorded video is to media media 
at woodlawnpark.org. That is the video for the end of year fellowship. Thank you so much. Amen. Uh, let's go to our garden prayer. Uh, and then I want to thank everyone who participated in today's service. Um, God, our Heavenly Father, um, we come to you today thanking you for um, all the things you've done for us. Yes. Father, um, thank you for your um, creation. Thank yes. you for the air we breathe. Um, thank you for all your creation, Lord. Father, uh, we're going through troubled times right now, but there is a God, and he is alive, and he is the Alpha and Omega yes. of all. He's the beginning and the end. God has the final say. Father, we'd like to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came into this world, suffered and died, so we might have the right to eternal salvation. These things and all things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Life can be a confusing journey, and it doesn't always make sense. Family issues, substance abuse, fading health, and financial problems are just a few of the roadblocks you may encounter. Need answers? At Woodlawn Park Church of Christ, we want you to know that God loves you and has the answers you seek. No one here expects you or your life to be perfect. At Woodlawn Park, we're just like you. Real people with real problems who are seeking real solutions in Christ. We've been through some of the same struggles and understand that the pathway to your full potential is paved with love, support, and the encouragement of a dynamic community of believers. We know that within Challenges Lab, the opportunity to move mountains in our lives and in our community. We believe that God has a purpose for you, and our goal is to help you achieve it. At Woodlawn Park, we're creating a new brand of believers, one that beats the odds when there isn't a chance, one that succeeds when the world says we can't, one that truly cares about the abandoned and lost. One that has faith in God's power no matter the cost. If you're wondering what your purpose is in life, if you're looking for the next step, join us. Let us meet you where you are, teach, encourage, 
and to motivate you to allow God to enhance your life so that you can transform the world. If anybody has a reason to sing, we do, oh we do, if anybody has a reason to sing, we do, yes we do sing, we do. come on and praise the Lord, let's praise the Lord, let's praise the Lord, let's praise the Lord, if anybody if anybody has a reason to sing, we do, yes we do, sing we do. If anybody has a reason to sing, say we do, yes we do, sing. Come on and praise the Lord, let's praise the Lord, let's praise the Lord, let's praise the Lord. to sing. 